Since the beginning of 1999, a series of more than three dozen scientific, physical, observational, and analytic methods have been used to examine the dramatic alteration of the atmosphere that has taken place. These tests have been conducted with much labor, time, and expense. They have been conducted with very limited resources and equipment, much of it requiring original construction, development, or modification. What follows is a partial presentation of these sampling methods. The diversity and thoroughness of examination is apparent in the work that has now spanned more than five years. The officials and authorities have not attempted to replicate these testing methods, at least not publicly. They have not reacted to the results in any formal fashion and they have not tangibly responded to the many calls for public inquiry and investigation that have been made. The methods and results of all testing procedures are available on the website www.carnicum.com. And this research represents a substantial body of information that may be helpful in interpreting the designs and motivations behind the aerosol operations. Essentially, the method is one of reverse engineering for a global covert operation, and there is no limit to the work that remains to be done. These findings conducted for more than five years are offered to the public. These studies begin with an examination of contrails themselves, a very common and ordinary phenomenon involving the freezing of water vapor into ice and their subsequent dissipation through evaporation and mixing. Meteorological studies of contrail formation and cloud formation have been made. Visibility standards and their reduction from a maximum of 40 to 10 miles have been called to attention. A study of pH, or of acid and alkalinity level, of rainfall has been conducted by a network of concerned citizens across the country. Highly unusual statistical results are present in the vast majority of these studies. Telephotos have been captured in the earlier phase of operations that directly show emissions from aircraft that are in complete defiance of any normal contrail formation. These unusual emissions are not a result of environmental conditions. They originate from the aircraft and can be shown in these cases to have no dependence upon even the engines of the aircraft. HEPA, or High Efficiency Particulate Air Filters, have been used in various states to directly filter the outdoor air in repeated tests. Some of the materials found include the repeated presence of unusual filaments, a gel formation, crystals, and powders. Extraordinary levels of particulate materials have been directly observed and recorded using simple methods discovered by citizens across the country. These methods include the corona of the sun and extremely powerful lamps. Caution with the solar method is especially advised. These observations have been taken under the most ideal weather and air quality conditions, and they nevertheless provide alarming and direct evidence of the substantial changes that have occurred in our atmosphere. Rainwater samples have been distilled to concentrate any solid materials or particulates. Metallic-based materials are evident upon observation. Unusual airborne filament samples have been collected from a variety of locations across the nation, as well as the globe. These fibers are highly unusual in their properties, and any claims of being simply spider webs cannot be substantiated. Samples of these fibers have been sent directly to the administrator of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Subsequent observation of these fibers under the microscope produces disturbing results, including the occurrence of unusual biological components. The United States EPA has refused to identify these fibers. Incredibly high mold counts have been found within repeated outdoor samples that have been taken. This result is in spite of the fact that the tests were conducted in an extremely arid environment in the high southwest of the United States. This arid environment has been further aggravated by extended drought conditions over the past several years, also a topic to be discussed further. It is a fact that particulate matter in the atmosphere acts as a transport mechanism or delivery system for other materials,
including biological materials that can piggyback onto the solid materials. This is in addition to the health risk, including respiratory illness and increased mortality that result from higher levels of particulate matter in the air. When you see these silvery white skies toward the horizon in the morning in, in the east, in the afternoon in the west, skies should be blue, not silvery white. And the bottom line is even when you don't see the horizon to horizon trails, we are absolutely still being sprayed. When you see even the shorter, bright trails, still aerosol disbursement. I challenge anybody, look at the high bypass turbofan jet engine, which is all tankers and all commercial carriers. 80% of the air that passes through that engine is non-combusted. That engine by design is almost incapable of making any type of trail. So when you see the silvery white skies still being sprayed, the horizon to horizon trails are the tip of the iceberg for these programs. Highly transparent nanoparticles. They have a refraction that is four times higher than the one of the diamonds. That, um, if you look it up on Wikipedia, you can read there that they are valid for uh, scalar applications. That they can be used in. Um, um, applications utilizing universe, uh, field structures. It is a set of physics that is not in the public domain. It's scalar physics. But even in Wikipedia, it is mentioned as one of the particles that can has the ability to handle and process scalar waves. Let's put it this way. Maybe it's the easiest. Um, this is the reason for the plant death because the, tra the crystal is highly transparent, but it absorbs UV light. At 260 nanometer wavelength, it is 100% opaque, absorbing UV signals. And this is exactly the frequency where the plants are processing the cell, div cell division impulse. Cell division occurs if a UV biophoton is hitting a cell. This is kind of the trigger to tell the cell, please divide into two. And if you have these particles within the plant tissue, you absorb all the cell division signals, and the plant stops growing. Um, this is actually the thing that caused uh, mad cow disease in the 80s. If you look exactly at the...